All right, this video goes over the basics of microeconomic theory in an introductory form. I'm going to go through the parts of an economic model and the, the main concepts that you're going to encounter throughout an entire semester of microeconomic theory, because basically um, it's an entire semester on one model. And that model is very flexible, you can interchange the parts in different creative ways. But that model is basically doing one thing, and that's what economists like to do, which is it models human decision making. And it's flexible enough that it can be applied to most human decision making. So I'd like to start with a basic simple model that I think um, exemplifies a lot of the properties we're going to be covering during the semester. And the decision we're going to start out with is how much time a student should spend studying. This is a decision you as a student are going to be making as you study for the course. So let's start out by modeling it. So first of all, we, we need to acknowledge that a model is always going to have a perspective. There's a person who's making the decision and then there's something that they control, in this case how much time they spend studying, and that's going to be the choice variable. So if we set up our model, um, we're going to actually, I'm going to have a table here that we're going to use as we think about this, and then under the table I'm going to start building our model. Okay, so our models are going to be maximization models, and they're models of decisions, and the decision that you're going to make is going to be right under the maximization sign. That's going to be your choice variable. In our case, it'll be time spent studying. And it's pretty important that you never read this as they're maximizing the time spent studying. That's not what they're doing. If you maximize the time spent studying, you're just going to spend 24-7 studying. You're never going to stop studying. That's not what we're doing. Never read this as we're maximizing our choice variable. You will never maximize a choice variable. So um, that is one point of confusion. Here's the decision. We know the perspective of the model is the student's perspective. And really, this is about doing thought experiments. What are the forces that pull you in both ways? What forces get you to study more? What forces get you to study less? And how do you balance those forces to figure out exactly how much time you are going to spend studying? So to think about that, we're going to think about it in a cost-benefit framework. So. Um, I'm going to set up a table with the costs and benefits and, and be thinking about what are the reasons you might study more and what are the reasons you might study less. So let's put those in a table and see if we can pick a couple to build into our model. Okay, so I've just brainstormed some costs and benefits, and of course benefits are the things that are going to pull us up. Why are you studying more? Why are you not studying zero? Um, so, well, of course studying um, gives you the joy of learning stuff. Studying improves your grades. Studying gives you skills, and skills will lead to a higher salary. Studying could directly improve job performance. This is really just me brainstorming reasons. Um, and costs are going to be um, what pulls us down. Why are you not studying an infinite amount or why are you not studying every waking moment of your life? Well, there's the effort that's painful, of course. Um, you could just be doing other more fun things or more important things and actually that leads to the idea of opportunity cost. What's the, what's the cost of each unit of time you spend studying? And then, of course, studying creates fatigue. And all of these are going to be endogenous variables, and endogenous variables are variables that respond when the choice variable changes. So all of these will be functions of the choice variable. For example, when we increase S, that leads to an increase in our grades. Um, I'll define grades as G, and that's going to be the one that I'm going to choose for our model, but you could really choose any of these. You could build as many of them as you wanted into your model. Um, I'm just going to simplify things by choosing the two that I think might be most important and most um, insightful for the first microeconomic lesson. So we have grades, and when we increase time spent studying, that increases our grades. So as a function, that's going to be grades is a function of the time spent studying. 
and any variable that is a function of our choice variable is going to be an endogenous variable. So we will build our endogenous variables into our models like this. So grades is going to be a function of time spent studying, which is our choice variable, the thing we're choosing. And um, grades, of course, is going to be our benefit. And we're going to subtract our cost. And our cost will also be an endogenous variable. That's going to be opportunity cost. Um, opportunity cost, I'm going to let that be O. So opportunity cost is a function of time spent studying, meaning if we increase the time spent studying, we're going to increase the opportunity cost, increase what we're giving up to participate. So let's build that into the model. All right, so we're modeling the decision how much time, oh. So we're maximizing our objective function, which is the thing we care about, our grades minus our opportunity cost. That's our objective function. Economists name things very intuitively. Our objective function is just what is our objective? What are our goals? When we're making this decision, what are the things we care about? And we care about, of course, good things and bad things and making good things bigger and making bad things smaller. And our objective function is a function of our choice variable, so another um, clearly named vari variable in the microeconomic model. And so once we have this set up, we can add um, exogenous variables. Now, exogenous variables do not, they're not functions of our choice variable. They're going to be other variables that might influence the decision. So if we start brainstorming what other things influence the decision about how much time to spend studying, we might come up with a list. Okay, if we're thinking about adding exogenous variables to the model, we're going to be asking the question, what other things are important um, influencers determining the optimal time spent studying? Now, this is actually an important distinction. Um, the time spent studying in this model, as it appears in the beginning of our model, is it can take on any value. We can take on the value, we can sort of imagine it taking on the value of zero, one, one hour a week, two hours a week, um, 24 hours a week, uh, 24 times seven hours a week. We can sort of imagine it taking on all those values and we haven't yet fixed a particular optimal value. As a matter of fact, the solution to this whole thing is going to be the optimal choice and that's going to be one particular value that will maximize our objective that will make us happiest. And those are two different things. So um, let's keep, let's, let's we're, what we're going to do, we're going to call S star. S star is the optimal value of S, and that is different from this S, which can take on any value we want. So watch that idea as we go through the class. Um, okay, so what other things influence the optimal time spent studying? So we might have something like um, the number of extracurriculars a student is involved with. So all of these are things that could come into a student's life that are going to influence the optimal value of S. And however, um, in our initial model, uh, when we change S, intelligence does not change. When we change S, sports participation or sports commitments don't change. So because of that, these are going to be exogenous variables and we're going to stick them inside our objective function in some way. Now here, it's pretty easy to see with the ones I've come up with where they would fit. For example, extracurriculars, if you're committed to more extracurriculars, that's going to influence your opportunity cost. So I'm gonna let this one be E and I'm going to stick it inside this function as such, and oftentimes in economics, we'll designate the exogenous variables with a bar over them just to highlight the fact that extracurriculars um, do not change when we change S. This is exogenous. Um, intelligence, that's going to influence how easy it is for you to translate time spent studying into higher grades. 
So this intelligence, if we're going to define that as I, that might belong inside this function. And I'll designate the I as being exogenous by putting a bar over it once again. And what this means is it means intelligence is going to modify the relationship between grades and time spent studying, and then extracurriculars is going to modify the relationship between opportunity cost and time spent studying. So that's an overview of the parts of an economic model and how you construct an economic model and its purpose.